Mass for Pentecost Sunday. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he led me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction, so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, prophecy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of God to these bones. See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you make flesh grow over you, cover you with the skin, and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophecy to the spirit, prophecy, son of man, and save the spirit, thus says the Lord God. From the four winds come, O spirit, and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life, and breathe into these, that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have, come, they have, been, they have been saying, Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. 
Oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves, as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that sees is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. According to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the last and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, 
Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For the vigil, we're celebrating this Saturday evening, the vigil of Pentecost. There are several different options for our first reading. So these may not be the readings that you expected for Pentecost Sunday. Usually on Pentecost Sunday, the reading is about the baptizing of the 3,000 from Acts of the Apostles when Peter receives the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we celebrate the birthday of the church. But I decided to go with the first reading. There are several different options from Ezekiel, and they all refer in some way, shape, or form to the Holy Spirit. So let's see what these readings uh, for the vigil of Pentecost have to say to us. Ezekiel is speaking to the Jewish people who have lost a war to the Babylonians. As a consequence, most of the educated and wealthiest Israelites were deported to Babylon, and they were kept there for nearly, nearly 60 years. And at the time of this reading, the center of their religion, their culture, has been destroyed, and they have no hope of going home. So here we have Ezekiel, who's around 30 years old, whose life isn't going according to his plan. He was born into a priestly family and had probably around then just completed his training for ministry as a priest. Instead of ministering in the temple, Ezekiel is taken in chains and deported to Babylon thousands of miles away from any home that he's ever known. And there aren't a lot of job opportunities for Ezekiel in Babylon. The unemployment rate was pretty high there. So an odd thing happens in this vision in the first reading. Ezekiel has a vivid dream of the Jewish people returning to Jerusalem and building an even greater temple than they had, had experienced. One of the visions is the first reading that we hear today, when the Spirit of God sets him in a vast plain filled with dry bones in every direction. And the Spirit is breathed into these bones and they spring to life as a huge army. But the newly resurrected army is pretty pessimistic about their future. They say, our hope is lost and we are cut off. But the Spirit of God isn't having any of that depressing message. He tells the army of bones that they will be taken home and that they will get back to Jerusalem, that God has promised this and he always keeps his promises. I find that this strange vision from Ezekiel thousands of years ago is quite comforting for us going through this time of COVID-19. It's a time that has been hard for everyone. We've been in an exile ourselves for the past three months, and now trying to reopen into a new normal. Our parish is planning on having public masses next weekend, June 6th and 7th, beginning with the 5.30 Saturday vigil, the 7.30 a.m. in Espanol, and the 9 o'clock a.m. in English. But worship will look very different from what we knew before the pandemic, with all kinds of uh, arrangements to try to keep us safe. We won't be able to sing together or embrace one another in a kiss of peace, but we will be able to gather together as God's people, and that is an, impor an important first step next weekend. So now let's take a look at our second reading, Paul's letter to the Romans. 
Paul compares all of creation to a woman giving birth. We ourselves are watching as the earth tries to give birth to something totally new. And we ourselves have seen this with our own eyes over these past uh, crazy weeks. We've seen the earth responding to less pollution, less travel, less driving. And we've seen polluted canals in Venice, for example, filled with light, with sea light. We've seen smog clear from skies over major cities. One missionary in Nepal said that for the first time in probably 20 years, they've been able to see the top of the Himalaya mountains from his village. And Paul gives us hope. Paraphrasing Paul in the words from the second reading, you are now hoping for what you can't see, for what you can't even imagine. But the Holy Spirit will come to you in all of your weakness. Even if you don't know what to pray for, the Spirit knows what to pray for and will pray for you. Now that is a hopeful message. We don't know what the future holds, but we do know the future is bright. The Holy Spirit is praying for us in all of creation. We can have hope, especially when the present is pretty challenging. Finally, in the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us that all who believe in him will receive the Holy Spirit, which is exactly what we celebrate on Pentecost. Each of Jesus' followers will become a river of living water. This is the exact opposite of the dry bones that Ezekiel saw in the first reading. Instead of being dead, dry bones, we will be living rivers of flowing water. So we take a look at today's readings as a whole, no matter how discouraged we may be, the Holy Spirit keeps his promises. The Spirit promises to fill us with life, and not just life, but a river of abundant life. Plus, the Spirit is bringing all of creation into that reality. And the Spirit will pray for us, even when we have no idea what we're supposed to pray for or how to pray. We have to trust that the Spirit is working through all of these events of our lives. Let's take heart from today's hopeful readings that better days are coming, and let that message sink in with us. Let's put our trust in God, who always keeps His promises. And we pray as today's song. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, we now offer these prayers of petition for the church and the world. We pray for Pope Francis and all Christian church leaders. May God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for leaders of nations, that the Holy Spirit give them discerning hearts to know his will and the courage to follow it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the troubled areas in our world, may God's grace descend upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For those of us gathered here this afternoon, may the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify us and transform us for the good of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our loved ones who have died, and may they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer you these prayers of petition that we make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us to all truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in professing one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please either kneel or be seated for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who minister in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please either kneel or be seated for the Eucharist, uh, communion rite. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. First, when we gather, I will be praying a spiritual communion prayer for the congregation. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you physically, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the graces you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and th that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.